Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It is me, Alana. For this video, I am going to be doing a mid-year check-in. So, um, I'm gonna do the typical, like, I think it's like 15 questions for this. Um, but it's just to check in and give you an update on how my reading's going, some of my favorite books so far that I've read, and just what the first half of this year has looked like for me. So the first question is, how is your reading going? Um, so far so good. I was doing really well at the beginning of the year and then just work kind of got busy and a little bit overwhelming so my reading took a nosedive a little bit so I wasn't reading as much as I was at the beginning of the year. That's okay because I still counted the win that I was reading anything at all. And I'm hoping that this summer it will pick back up a little bit more and I'll be able to get the things that I want read. So number two, best book you've read so far in 2024. So I actually have two, op two picks for this because I enjoyed both of these books immensely. So the first book I have on this list is The Blood Trials by N.E. Davenport. Um, I didn't realize how much I was going to love this book when I picked it up in May, but I absolutely thrived while reading this. Um, it follows a girl who lives in this like militaristic society. Her grandfather was like the prime or like the the big leader of the of the society and he dies before this book starts. And so when we start the book, she's just honestly consumed by her grief. She doesn't really care anymore about like her purpose and her path and her life. She's just kind of there trying to basically ignore the fact that like she's so hurt and it isn't until that she finds out that her grandfather may have been murdered and his death may not have been an accident that she kind of gets it together enough to um make it a purpose to find out who killed him and why so I really liked it. I thought it was very interesting. I thought the world building was interesting. I really enjoyed that. I thought the magical elements of the world was also really neat. And I just really enjoyed the way the author wrote the story and the characters. And I love that our main character, like, was just brutal. <laughs> but, like, she never really let anyone do the work for her like she was willing to always like fight and do the work herself and so I enjoyed that and she was honestly just a really strong character overall even when dealing with her grief and so I just loved this story so much and I'm really really sad that this ended up being like a duology because I really think if the publisher had let her the author could have done so much and even made this like a trilogy or beyond. And the second book I have for this prompt is The Wishing Game by Meg Schaefer. So this is complete opposite of uh, The Blood Trials and this is a more um, contemporary fiction and it is about a woman who is a teacher's aide and she has had she had like a very difficult childhood where she just was ignored by her family entirely because her sister was very sickly and so there's a little boy who is in the foster care system that she has like basically fallen in love with as like her son and she wants to adopt him but she unfortunately does not have the financial security to be able to adopt him and so one of her favorite childhood authors creates this competition and invites her to play along and whoever wins gets the next manuscript to his like newest book in the series he's been writing all these years and so with that she knows that if she were to win and get the manuscript she'd be able to make tons of money and be able to adopt this boy so I thought this was such a sweet and cute story. I really enjoyed the fact that it felt like everybody in the story healed a bit from whatever traumas were haunting them from the past. Even the author himself had some trauma that he was dealing with and the competition and just like 
seeing these children again, or like children as adults again, uh, kind of healed a part of himself I guess he didn't realize he needed healing for. And then I just enjoyed the fact that it really explored how much the things in your childhood can affect you later on in life. Childhood drama does play such a big role in how you go further in life and how you present yourself and so I really loved that exploration as well and I just again I just I, it was so sweet I felt like my inner child was healing a little bit while reading this too because I don't know it just fulfilled something in me I didn't know needed to be fulfilled and so I feel like it could have the same effect on other people who read it but I'm definitely gonna check out anything else that Meg Schaefer writes. I think this was her first book, so I am looking forward to see what else she comes out with. Number three is best sequel you've read so far in 2024. So the first, I picked two more for this um, because it was hard to choose. So for the first one, I have A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J Maas. So if you watched my January wrap up, I was not a big fan of A Court of Thorns and Roses. But when I finally read A Court of Mischief Fury in May, I actually enjoyed it so much more than that first book. And it just kind of shocked me how much I enjoyed it because I really went in with no expectations of enjoying it at all. And so I think it helped that we were able to see a new element of Prithian and a new element of the world and have new characters come and join in to um, the world itself and so I think that helped a lot at least for me to find some enjoyment in the story. And then the next book I read, uh, the next sequel that I really enjoyed was A Vicious Game by Melissa Blair. So this is the third book in the Halfling Saga series that she's writing. Um, I gave this one, I believe, like, four or five stars. And, um, obviously I'm not going to spoil it because it is the third book, but I do enjoy the way this book was going, the path that it was taking, and I'm really looking forward to it. And I think it's the last book that's coming out after this, which makes me so sad, but I'm really looking forward to I guess the end of this series and see what she does next um, because I really do love this series so much. It's so so good. I am gonna be bummed when it ends because I just don't know if I can find something that'll match this level of love for me for this series. This is about a woman who is a halfling and in this world her people are basically enslaved by the king and so she has, like, she tried to fight it and lost and failed, and so she kind of gave up. But that want to save her people is relit after she experiences um, a rival assassin, essentially. And then from there, the story follows her journey as she basically gets back into the rebellion and trying to stop this king from killing everybody. Alright, next. So, four is a favorite reread. So, I actually have not reread anything this year, which is kind of surprising because I used to reread things all the time. But as I've gotten older and I've just, like, I don't know, expanded my reading horizons, I'm finding that I'm not rereading stuff as much, which kind of makes me sad. And now I might make it a point to re at least reread one thing for this next half of the year because I need to keep that skill alive. Number five is a genre you've been loving slash reading the most. So over the past like couple years fantasy has become a big genre for me which is such a big change because before it was just contemporary and maybe and like romance but now it's fantasy and this year I've noticed that I've di I've been diving into a lot of fantasy romance a bit more. Six, a new release you haven't read yet but want to and so for that one I have 
when the moon hatched. I've heard decent things about this. It's really chunky and I just haven't had a chance to pick it up but I have the audio prime and ready so it's just whenever I can get around to clicking play that I can finally read this story. Um, I don't know a lot about what it's about and I want to keep it that way because I have the most fun when I do that. <laughs> Seven is the most anticipated release for the second half of the year. So I really haven't been keeping up with releases actually and so I don't have a lot of answers for this but my main answer is probably going to be Goldfish by Raven Kennedy. This is the last book in the Plated Prisoner series. It's probably going to be my most anticipated book for the last half of 2024. Eight is biggest disappointment. I have one. So um, it's everyone in my family has killed somebody. Was really looking forward to this book because I've heard I had heard so many good things about it so I thought it would be like a comical kind of mystery and then when I started I was like into it and then it slowly just became kind of redundant and I just felt like it wasn't giving what I expected it to give and honestly I was kind of getting bored and I was also getting a little annoyed as the story kept going so I ended up just deciding to DNF because I felt like it wasn't gonna live up to what I expected it to be. The story itself is about a man whose brother is has been in jail because of him, the main, ca the main character. And so on the night that his brother is released and is supposed to be joining him and his family up at this like resort thing. Um, somebody dies and so basically the main character has to prove that his brother didn't do it or that his family is basically not a family of killers so but it's very satire in a way so I just was not a fan number nine is biggest surprise so I have three so Court of Mr. Fury which I talked about earlier was probably my biggest one of my biggest surprises of the year the next book I have is Powerless by Lauren Roberts. I did not have very high expectations going into this book. I didn't really, like, not that I expected to hate it, I just wasn't sure. And I came out by the end actually really loving this story, and it just really surprised me because I don't know, I just haven't, it's been a hit or a miss with when it comes to fantasy romance sometimes for me, so I was just very shocked. By how much I actually enjoyed it and how much I'm looking forward to the sequel so that's fun the last book I have this on this list is and then there were none by Agatha Christie I was actually really surprised by that book and how much I loved it because I had read murder on the Orient Express and I enjoyed it and then I read the ABC murders and I was very bored by that one so when I picked up and then there were none I was kind of skeptical because I had so far I had enjoyed one of her books and I hadn't hadn't enjoyed another one and then um as I got through the story I realized how hooked I was into the storyline and figuring out who the killer was and then I was even shocked by who the killer was by the end so I give her props for that. Ten is favorite new author for that one I'm gonna do any dev N.E. Davenport which is the author of the blood trials because I feel like if she does another fantasy I'd be willing to read it based on how much I loved the blood trials and even the sequel book. Eleven is newest favorite character. I don't really have one. I don't think I don't really obsess over characters like that. Twelve a book that made you cry. I don't think I've cried at all while reading this year. If I have it might have been during the wishing game but otherwise I really can't name any instance. Number 13, a book that made you happy. I have a lot. Probably most of the books I've read so far that I've enjoyed this year. So Funny Story by Emily Henry is definitely one that made me happy. Blood Trials, Court of Mist and Fury, The Blood Gift. 14 is the most beautiful book you've bought so far. So I haven't really bought a lot of books because I've been making a, it a point to just like chill on that and but I still get the fairy loot boxes and so I have the fairy loot edition of uh, Fate Inked in Blood by Danielle L. Jensen and I think this is probably the 
most beautiful book I've gotten so far this year. Like this is without the cover and then this is with the cover and I just really like the sprayed edges and everything so I think this is probably gonna be, gonna be my pick for for this video. And even just the inside like in inside the book is like really beautiful so and then 15 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year so i'm gonna just keep saying all the book all my unread books on my shelves i'm really working hard to get through those and i think i've been doing a decent job um but just trying harder to <laughs> read through those and get rid of the stuff that i don't like and clear up some space on my shelves this was my mid-year check-in essentially hopefully you all enjoyed it let me know some books you've enjoyed for the first half of this year i would love some recommendations of books to check out and let me know if there are books that you are anticipating for the last half of the year because i would also love recommendations for those because i have no idea what's coming out to be honest and if you want to see more videos from me please hit that subscribe button you are all sunflowers in a world full of weeds